Ito's Lemma from Scratch. The goal in this video is to derive and make sense of Ito's Lemma. Basically, Ito's Lemma is an extension of the total derivative expression from ordinary calculus to stochastic calculus. Specifically, the stochastic process is an Ito process, which has a general drift term and a general diffusion term. I'll show exactly what I mean by this later. But first, let's start by mentioning some reminders from ordinary calculus. Remember that the total derivative of a function which depends on two variables, x and t, can be written using the chain rule as such. Next, we also need to remind ourselves of how to expand the function around some x is equal to a value using the Taylor series. This expansion can be thought of as building the f of x around x is equal to a by first adding the linear slope contribution, then curvature, then higher order derivatives, and so on. By the way, this expression can be derived from the fundamental theorem of calculus using integration by parts. Now, if we want to expand the same function around a plus a small delta x, then the x minus a terms simply become delta x. Then we take the f of a to the other side to obtain delta f as such. In the limit of delta x going to 0, we can replace delta x with dx, and delta f becomes the x derivative component of the total derivative. Now we can express the total derivative of a function with respect to t and x using this Taylor expansion. So we substitute this expansion for t and x components. And let's combine the quadratic terms together. So far, the above is ordinary calculus, and we don't have anything out of the ordinary. Now we need to introduce the Ito process. Here, x becomes stochastic, so it's no longer a simple variable, but it represents a stochastic process. This also makes the function f a stochastic function as well. Now the dx in the Ito process can be described as a combination of drift and diffusion terms. Here, w is a linear process, which can be described as epsilon times square root of dt, where epsilon is sampled from a standard normal distribution. The square root is important here. It exists because, for a stochastic variable, the variances are additive, but the standard deviations are not. So that's why dt must be under the square root to meet that condition. The square root of time comes up again and again in stochastic processes and in finance in general. Okay, now we just substitute this new stochastic x into our derivative. And for simplicity, I'm going to omit the arguments of a and b for now. Next, we want to derive the result when dt goes to 0. In that case, terms such as dt squared can be ignored. dt times dw is also going to disappear, as dw is proportional to square root of dt, overall giving dt to the power of 3 over 2. What do we do about the dw squared term? It turns out that we can simply replace it with dt. It intuitively makes sense as dw is proportional to square root of dt, so dw squared should be proportional to dt, but let's show that more thoroughly. This is actually the key point in the derivation as dw squared cannot be simply ignored as the other quadratic terms, 
as it can be shown that it can be replaced by dt here. So how can we show that? Again, dw is defined as epsilon times square root of dt, where epsilon is sampled from a standard normal distribution with mean 0 and sigma 1. So the dw squared process is going to be epsilon squared times dt. First, let's look at the variance of epsilon, which has to be equal to 1, as it is sampled from sigma is equal to 1 by construction. But we can also write it using the variance formula. Since the expected mean is 0, we get that the expected epsilon squared is equal to 1. This is going to be useful for us soon. Next, let's look at the expected value of the dw squared process. Substituting its definition, then taking out the dt, then using the fact that the expected epsilon squared is 1, we get the result as dt. We are not yet done. We need to look at how much the dw squared process fluctuates. For that, let's calculate the variance of dw squared. Again, substitute dw and use the variance formula. This term is equal to dt squared from the above result. For this term, we take out dt squared, and this term is the fourth moment of standard normal distribution, which is known to give 3. So overall, we get 2 times dt squared for the variance of dw squared. But remember that if dt is going to 0, then dt squared is going to go to 0 much faster than that. So we can say that the variance or fluctuations of dw squared is going to be negligible, and it becomes a non-stochastic process. In other words, we can treat it as an ordinary variable and simply use its expected value, which is dt, in the total derivative. Finally, grouping all the dt terms and putting back the arguments gives us the total derivative for a stochastic function f. This is called Ito's lemma after a Japanese mathematician Kiyoshi Ito who first derived it in 1951. This is a very fundamental result in stochastic calculus and it's extensively used in finance, for example, to derive the black scholes merton equation for pricing options. That's why Kiyoshi Ito is known as the most famous Japanese on Wall Street. So to recap, Ito's lemma gives us an expression for the total derivative of a stochastic function f, which depends on an Ito process, which is a general drift diffusion process. The key point is that, unlike in the ordinary calculus, some quadratic-looking terms survive until the end, which end up changing how the derivative looks.